Well, there is... Well, start with fans, the sort of, you know, the dark side of fans, the Port Vale fan who ran onto the uh, the pitch, chased the referee. We simply cannot allow that. Stewards have got to be quicker. I can understand why the players didn't intervene. I know some of them took a little bit of criticism on social media, but really that should be left to, to the police and the stewards. It was apprehended, I think, by uh, by Port Vale coaching staff in the end. But and look, the, the, the club, very sensible club, good owners they've reacted quickly on that one but that because referees I mean it's just such a terrible look and for that individual referee and what message does that send out to grassroots referee if a fan can get on the pitch and have a go at the referee well, I mean we saw at, at a higher level that what happened in Turkey with the chairman run, running on and, and smacking a ref this is another incident and they, they're happening too often aren't they and this fan runs a heck of a long way to chase the ref doesn't he if you have a look at it on X or YouTube or whatever I don't know whether it's because we're an angry society at the moment, whether it's a you know individuals feeling empowered and they feel they can say anything like on social media, and then when they go out into society, they feel they can behave in a in a similar way. But the stewards and the police have got to be quicker and stop people like that getting on the pitch, and he has to be banned for life. Well, indeed, we've had a text saying just that the numbskull thuggish supporter at Port Vale should be banned for life from all football. I don't think it's even an argument, is it? It's not an argument, and he's I mean, he's he's let the other fans down there because it's em- embarrassing for them. So absolutely, but look, Port Vale as a club sounds like they're handling it well. Um, papers are obviously uh, full of Maidstone, which we'll get onto later, which is fantastic story on the back of the sun about Marcus Rashford going off to um, Northern Ireland for a couple of days and uh, missing training on Friday. Yeah, I'm sure this will be used as a, as, as a stick to beat Marcus Rashford with. with he's not playing. I mean, he's, his form over the last month has slightly improved. But I think there has to be some context with this in that he went over to see uh, a friend of his, Rashawn Williams, who's playing at Larn. I mean, it's not as if he's on a jolly to Ibiza. You know, he's gone over to, to see a friend and, and Lan, their academy, they're obviously delighted that they had this sort of footballing superstar who went and sort of talked to their, their young players. Uh, he came back, he missed training because he's ill. He's unlikely to play today because he's ill. I think that puts it slightly in uh, context, but it's not a great look for him, uh, particularly with his, him not playing particularly well. And we did have the case, of course, after the Man City game where he went out for his birthday and Ten Hag actually reprimanded him for that. And that was after a game, so that wasn't that wasn't as they, in the lead-up to preparations. Yeah. That was afterwards. But it, he just doesn't always read the room, maybe. No, but I also think that Marcus Rashford, in a way, like Raheem Sterling to an extent, he does get sort of targeted with these mm. stories. So I think there is a little bit of sympathy for this one, particularly if he's ill. And uh, just on... Klopp, which we're going to go into in a bit more detail. You want to have a quick word about successes? Success as well. I mean, it's inevitably that the, the story moves on, football moves on. Obviously, there's going to be a huge, great celebration and tears and joy and all that for the rest of the uh, the season and a great celebration of what Jurgen Klopp's done. But clearly, it's can Liverpool get Xabi Alonso out of Bayer Leverkusen? I've heard all the other names. I even saw Thomas Frank in one paper. I think it's in Gareth Southgate. don't think Liverpool fans are going to have that. Uh, De Zerbi is an obvious contender. But for me, it has to be Xabi Alonso. Why would it be so hard to get Xabi Alonso out by eleven Leverkusen? Surely Liverpool's a much, much bigger club. It's for me. He's, he for me, so he's well. the only choice. But I think you have to be respectful for Bayer Leverkusen. He's got a contract there. But I think a man of that intelligence, of that connection with Liverpool, a man who can actually sort of step in to what are going to be absolutely huge shoes. The good thing is, and people are comparing it with the Manchester United post-Ferguson, with Arsenal post-Wenger, is that he's got a young, hungry team that he will mm. inherit from Klopp. But I mean, to quote Richard Masters, Bayer Leverkusen are a small club when it comes to compared to Liverpool, aren't they? Honestly, and now he's got Richard Masters, the CEO of the, the Premier League, so that about Everton and Nottingham Forest. Everton have won the title, what, yeah, nine right. times? They founded the Football League, they founded the Premier League. Nottingham Forest have won the European Cup twice. That's not my definition of small. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.